What's going on everyone, my name is Kodamore and welcome to episode 10 of the New Beginner Java Game Programming Tutorial Series. In this tutorial, we're going to fix our game loop, that way it runs properly on every single computer. Now, I'm going to write some temporary code here. You, you don't have to write this code, but I recommend that you do. I'm just going to create an integer variable called x and set it equal to 0 up here. And down in my render method where I draw my grass tile image to the screen, I'm going to render it at x position of whatever this x variable that I just created equals. So right now my grass tile is going to be rendered at whatever the x variable is, so position 0, comma 10 on the y. So if we run this, our grass tile is displayed to the screen. Now in my tick method, every time this tick method runs, I am going to increment the x variable by 1. So I am going to add 1 to the x variable every single time this tick method is called. And remember, our tick and render methods are being called over and over again many, many times every second. So if our x variable is increasing, then that means the x position of our image is also increasing, because it uses that variable. So this means our image, our grass tile, should move from left to right across our game screen. So if we run our game now, the grass tile moves very, very quickly from the left to the right of my screen. Now, it works, but there's a huge problem with this. If I was running this code on a slower computer, then that grass tile would have moved much, much slower across the screen. And if I was running it on a very, very fast computer, that grass tile would have moved super quickly across the screen. And that's not good. Because if you have a game where you have a player moving around, then someone playing your game on a very slow computer, well, their, their player is going to move very slowly. But if you have a player using, or rather, someone playing your game on a very, very fast computer, then their player is going to move super fast and you don't want that. You want your game to run at the same speed no matter what computer you're using. So a slow computer should run your game at the same speed as a very fast computer. So what we're going to do today is we are going to limit how many times the tick and render methods are being called every single second so that it runs the same speed on every single computer. Now, before I get started here, I want to point out that the code that I'm going to be writing in this tutorial can get very confusing. I did not understand this code until probably four months after I learned it, so I'll try and explain it to you guys the best I can, but if you don't understand it, that's completely fine, that is okay. And another thing, you're probably not going to memorize this code instantly. It took me over a year to memorize this code. So don't worry, just follow along and bear with me, try to understand. If you don't really look hard at the code, try and understand it. If you don't, that's completely fine. All right. So below where we call this init method in our run here, we're going to create a few variables. I'm going to call an int variable, which I'll call fps, and set that equal to 60. fps stands for frames per second, or ticks per second. This is how many times every second we want the tick and render methods to run. So I'm going to set mine to 60. That's probably a good number. We want our tick and render methods to be called 60 times every single second. Next, we're going to create a double variable, and we're going to call this variable time per tick. And we're going to set that equal to the number 1 billion, so 1 followed by 9 zeros, divided by our FPS variable. Now why the number 1 billion? Well, there are 1 billion nanoseconds in 1 second. So instead of measuring time in seconds when we're doing computer stuff, we're going to measure time in nanoseconds because it's much, much more specific. So what we're doing is we're dividing the amount of time in nanoseconds that equals one second. So essentially one second divided by our frames per second, how many times we want to run the tick and render methods every second. What this will get us is it'll get us the maximum amount of time that we are allowed to have to run the tick and render methods to achieve our 60 frames per second goal, to run them 60 times every second. So our time per tick variable is now going to be equal the maximum amount of time we're allowed to run these tick and render methods. Again, things might be, get a little confusing here. I'm not that good at explaining all these numbers. All right. Next, we're going to create a double variable called delta and set that equal to zero. I'll explain this one later. Next, we're going to create a long variable and we're going to call this last. Or I'm sorry, we're going to call this now. And we don't have to set that equal to anything. Then we're going to create a long variable below that and call it last time. We are going to set this equal to system.nanotime. System.nanotime returns the amount of time in nanoseconds that our computer is running at. So think of it as a clock. 
This method is just going to return the current time of our computer, but in nanoseconds. And that's what this last time variable is going to set equal to. That's all we need for now. We're going to add some more to this in a little bit, but for now we'll leave it at this. Next, we have to do a lot of stuff in this while running loop, in our game loop. Before we do the tick and render methods here, we have to set our now variable equal to system.nanotime. So we're setting our now variable equal to the current time of our computer in nanoseconds. Next, we have to add to the delta variable, so delta plus equals. So we're going to add to the delta variable whatever our now minus last time is, divided by our time per tick. So this looks quite confusing. Basically, now minus last time will get the amount of time passed since we last called this line of code right here. Then we're going to divide that amount of time by the maximum amount of time we're allowed to have to call these tick and render methods. And we're adding it to the delta variable. This is going to add to the delta variable essentially how much time we have until we have to call these tick and render methods again. That's essentially what this delta variable is. It tells the computer when and when not to call these tick and render methods. So we're just adding the amount of time that's passed and seeing if we need to call the methods or not. And then, finally, we have to set our last time variable equal to the now variable. Because we're all done with this part of the code, so our last time should now be equal to the now variable, which would be the current time of our computer when running this code. Did that make any sense? I don't know. Anyways, I I'm going to go over this after anyways. Anyways, wow, I just said anyways a lot. Okay, so the final thing we need to do is check if we actually have to call the tick and render methods. So we're going to surround the tick and render methods in an if statement here. And I'm going to do this. So our if statement is going to be if our delta variable is greater than or equal to the number 1. So if our delta is bigger than or equals the number 1, then that means we have to tick and render in order to achieve 60 frames per second. And remember, our delta variable is being added to every time at the top of our game loop. So if the time accumulates to equal over 1, then that means, okay, we have to tick and render right now. And then below all this, we have to subtract 1 from the delta. So delta minus minus will just subtract 1 from the delta, meaning, okay, we ticked and rendered, so we can minus u by 1. This should work. If we run our game now, as you can see, our grass tile moves much more slowly across the screen, and it should run at the same speed on any computer, unless you have a really, really bad computer that can barely run. So that's perfect. But let's verify that this is working a little bit more. Let's add an FPS counter, a frames per second counter, to see if we're actually doing stuff correctly. So a frames per second counter is a visual representation to us to show us exactly how many times the tick and render methods are being called every second. So where we initialize all of the variables up here, we're going to create a new variable. It's going to be a long, and we're going to call it timer and set that equal to zero. I'll explain that in just a bit. And then below that, we'll have an integer variable, which I'll call ticks and set that equal to zero. All right. Now, in our while running loop here, right below where we increment the delta variable, we are going to add to our timer, so timer plus equals, we are going to add the amount of time that has passed since this code last ran. So it's as simple as doing now minus last time. So this will add to our timer variable the amount of nanoseconds that has passed since we last called this little block of code right here. Okay. And whenever we call the tick and render methods, so whenever we tick and render, we, we want to increment the ticks variable by one. We want to say, okay, we ticked and rendered, so now we just want to say, all right, we did that one more time, so add one to the ticks variable. Now below this if statement here, we have to check if our timer is greater than or equal to one second in nanoseconds, so one with nine zeros, so if our timer has been running for one second, then we want to see, all right, how many ticks did we do in that last one second that we just ran? So we're going to do system.out.println and just print something to the console. We're going to print, all right, ticks and frames, colon, and then we're going to add our ticks variable. And then down here, we're going to set ticks back equal to zero so that it resets. And we are also going to set our timer equal to zero again so that that resets. 
So if I pull my console into view here, and we run our game, our grass tile is moving steady, but every single second we're going to get a little update in our console. Are we running at 60 frames per second? Well, yes we are. Now it's okay if it fluctuates a little, it might go 61 or 59 sometimes, but if your number is way off, then I would definitely check your code. You can get the source code off of my website, by the way, and check your code, because it's very important that this is correct, because this is going to verify that your game is running correctly. So now we have a visual representation of how many times our tick and render methods are being called every second. Alright, we just typed a fair amount of code. Now, for those of you who need one more quick explanation, hopefully I'll be able to get that right now. We start by initializing a bunch of variables. The first variable that we initialize is the FPS variable, the frames per second variable. This number is the amount of times that we want to call the tick and render method every second. Then we have our time per tick variable. Time per tick is the maximum amount of time in nanoseconds that we have to execute the tick and render methods, that way we're able to achieve our 60 frames per second target. Then we have our double delta. Delta is essentially the amount of time we have until we have to call the tick and render methods again. And we do a bunch of fancy division down here to get it so that it's somewhere between the numbers 0 and 1 when we add to it. Then up here we have the now variable. This now variable is initialized at the beginning, or whenever the beginning of our game loop hits. This is the current time of our computer. And then up here we set our last time variable equal to the computer's current nano time, that way we have it correct. And at the end of when we're done this block of code, we set the last time equal to the now. This way when our loop runs again, we have the last time that this variable, or rather that this block of code was run. Then we have our timer and ticks variables. Our timer is going to time until we get to one second. Once we hit one second, then we have to figure out or print out to the screen how many ticks or how many times our tick and render methods were actually called. And you don't need this, but this is just a nice visual representation to have to make sure everything's running correctly. Down here, I just explained pretty much all of this code. The timer right here, all we're doing is adding the amount of time that has passed since we last called this little block of code here. And then we check, if our delta variable is greater than or equal to 1, then that means we have to tick and render, or we're not going to get to 60 frames per second, or whatever this number is. If it is greater than 1, we tick render, we increment the ticks variable to say, okay, we ticked one more time, and we decrement the delta variable to say, okay, we ticked one more time, and the delta can relax a little bit. Then, this last if statement here, again, this is completely optional, but it checks if our timer has exceeded one second. After one second, it's going to tell us how many ticks has occurred in that last second. Then we reset the ticks variable and the timer so that we can get it constantly over and over again. Alright, that's quite a bit of code, but we finally have finished our game loop for the most part. We're still going to do more to it in the far future, but we don't have to worry about that now. If we run our game, our grass tile moves across the screen, and hopefully it moves across the screen at the same rate on any computer that you try it, or almost any computer. Thanks for watching everyone, and I'll see you in the next episode. This has been awesome.